Hi, my name is Robert Hunting. This is one of several in a series aimed at explaining how young children learn mathematics. We want children to become sensible and confident measurers. Their education should lead them to that end, but should also take account of ways they think in measurement situations. As adults, we think of measurement as an action we perform resulting in a number that represents a property of some object, like its length, area, weight and so on. From an adult perspective, the business of measurement is fundamentally about managing uncertainty. You see, we can never know the real measure of a thing, only some approximation. All measurements should be preceded by the word about. Mary is about 148 centimetres tall and weighs about 45 kilograms. She is about 9 years and 3 months and 2 days, 16 hours, 6 minutes and 40 seconds old. The purpose of accurate measurement is to determine a range, that is, an upper and a lower limit between which the real measurement lies. So, for example, when we accept that Mary stands 148 centimetres in height, we really mean that we believe her real height is actually somewhere between 147.5 and 148.5 centimetres. Height in humans varies according to various factors, including physiological conditions. There's the story of a young man who was denied entrance into the armed services because his measured height was just under the allowed minimum. Someone told him to re-enlist early in the morning before he drank any liquids because the gaps between his vertebrae lengthened overnight when he wasn't drinking liquids. It worked. We select the most appropriate measurement unit so as to produce a range of certainty depending on the purpose for measuring. We use millimetres to measure the length of an ant for example, not metres. We use kilometres to measure the distance between cities, not millimetres. From a child's perspective, measurement is fundamentally based on the core operation of comparison. As children pass through their elementary education, considerations about how to minimise measurement error become important. Measurement error can occur from choice of measurement tool and from the use of that tool. One kind of intellectual hurdle children will need to achieve when making comparisons in measurement situations is that of conservation. For a child, an object or the property of an object is conserved if, after that object undergoes a physical transformation, the child knows logically that if nothing has been removed or added, despite perceptual change in appearance or size, then that object or attribute remains unchanged. It is said to be invariant. An example of a task used to assess a child's understanding of conservation of length is as follows. If there was a little ant here and a little ant here, and they both run as fast as each other, what's going to happen? They're going to both get them there at the same time. Okay, now look at this. We're going to make one of the little race tracks, little pathways, and change it like, like it like this. Now, there's a little ant here. Imagine there's a little ant here and a little ant here, and they have to run to the end, end of the toothpicks. Which ant is going to get to the end first? Or are they going to get there at the same time? The first one to go. Which one? The first one to go. Well, they both leave at the same time. When you say go, they both run, and they run as fast as each other. Both is the ant on the is the ant on this end this toothpick? The is one, he going to get to the end first, or is this one going to get to the end first, or are they both? The going one to... on here is going to go get to the end first. How do you know that? Because this is a line. Yeah. This is zigzag. That's zigzag. Yeah. And you think the zigzag one will be quicker? Yes. Okay. All right. Mathematics educators more or less agree that children's knowledge about measurement develops through three stages. 
direct comparisons, indirect comparisons with use of informal units, and the use of formal units. A comparison performed by physically aligning two objects side by side or one on top of the other is called direct comparison. For example, to decide the taller in height of two people, they could stand back to back. Direct comparisons can be used to place objects in order of length, area, mass and so on. When two objects cannot be physically positioned to allow a direct comparison, an intermediate object may be used. For example, two people whose height we want to compare are separated by a fence, say. A piece of string or cord could be used to represent one person's height, then the string could be transferred to make a direct comparison with the other person, noting whether the string mark representing the height of person A is greater than, less than, or equal to the height of person B. Indirect comparison suggests the initial use of a measurement unit. A length of string becomes the informal unit of measurement. Informal or non-standard units used in systems in past days had names that referred to body parts or specific objects. For example, a foot or a stone. The Scottish foot is equal to about 30.65 centimetres, the Japanese foot about 30.30 centimetres. Examples of informal units children could use for measuring the length of items include books, paper clips, unifix cubes, shoes, paces, pens or pencils, hand spans, popsicle sticks and so on. Examples of informal units children could use to measure the passing of time include hand claps, finger snaps, skips, jumps, hops, etc. For comparisons to be useful more generally, formal or standard units are necessary. The International System of Units, or metric system, has now been adopted by all countries and is now in use worldwide. You can discover more about how children learn mathematics by obtaining my books What Children Can Teach Adults About Mathematics and The How and Why of Teaching Elementary Mathematics available through the iTunes Store, Amazon or Google Books. Visit my website at www.palm-ed.com or Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash hello palm.